Are you happy in your life? From my world. And he brought me to his world. What if the person that abducted me is me? Hey, fam. What if you made a decision in your past that was so significant, so important, that it shaped your future? Now, what if you could go back and change your decision? Yo, what's good, my people? This is Anthony from Alternate Reality Reviews, and you know what we do here. Today, we're diving into the mind-bending world of Dark Matter, a new sci-fi series on Apple TV+. Now, <clears throat> hold up. Rewind the existential crisis that you just witnessed. The series is based on the mind-blowing book series by Blake Crouch. You know, the guy who wrote those thrillers that mess with your reality so much, you question if you left the iron on at home. Yeah. That's him. So the book series follows Jason Dessen, a regular physics professor, played by the awesome Joel Edgerton, whose life gets turned upside down when he's abducted and finds himself in an alternate reality. Just like that, he's somewhere else, gone from the boring commute to the successful rock star without a wife, but gains a pretty hot girlfriend, Alice Braga. But here's the twist. Jason didn't want this life. It was his alternate self who wanted his life and swapped places with him. Now, Jason's got to navigate this messed up labyrinth of what ifs to get back to his real family. And the biggest threat? Himself. Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, you, look, I love you guys. Do me a favor. If you're new here, you like this video, like, subscribe, and keep an eye out for more videos. Now, the episode opens with someone emerging out of a room into an empty warehouse and seemingly checking things out around him as the camera pulls away and reveals that he walked out of a giant cube in the center of this empty warehouse room. We then switch and see Jason living the American dream, life with the wife, the son, and seeming pretty happy. We even see him doing dad duties and helping his son with his math and trying to remind us all that sine and cosine are a thing that is equal to y that look <laughs> nah, i'm not gonna lie i don't remember any of that stuff from grade school but it adds to the moment i love this little detail we see jason taking his son charlie out for a driving lesson on his way to school when charlie comes across an intersection that's starting to change lights on him jason notices that charlie isn't paying attention and warns him to hit the brakes which he does causing him to spill coffee all over the front seat of the car. Remember this moment, because this will be something we revisit in the future. Charlie gets a call from his buddy Ryan, who's inviting him out for drinks to celebrate Ryan winning the Pavia Award. Now, hold up, don't jump to conclusions. The Pavia isn't the latest Italian fashion brand or some no-nonsense prize. Each year, the University of Pavia offers several prizes aimed at supporting especially brilliant students and alumni for standing out with their capabilities, the ingenuity of their work on specific topics. So it's an Italian school for geniuses that hands out awards to their brightest students. You know, like Science Olympics, but way cooler. Jason is happy for his friend, but you can kind of tell that there's a hint of jealousy there too. Fast forward and we see Jason standing in front of his class of college students trying to explain, well, it kind of looks like he's trying to explain Schrodinger's cat. Now, all my Frumley out there, y'all remember Schrodinger's cat, right? It's when there's a cat in a sealed box with some poison and until you open the box, the cat could be considered both dead and alive. Or, you know, something like that. Jason adds in a single radioactive atom in the box along with the cat and poison and posits that if there's no atomic decay, then the cat lives. But if the atom does decay, then the Geiger counter will detect radiation, break open the vial of poison, and the cat dies. Now, this is actually really important as Jason is actually explaining the science behind the box right now and the theoretical science that allows him and his variant to travel across the multiverse. He says that the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics theorizes that the atom exists in a superposition state. Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> Jason's talking about some wild stuff called a superposition state. Now, imagine you have a cat. Normally, it's either napping in a sunbeam or plotting world domination. But 
In this crazy quantum world, the cat can be both napping and plotting at the same time. Is your brain melting yet? Basically, until someone opens the door or observes the experiment, the cat exists in both possibilities simultaneously. Super weird, but that's the wacky world of quantum mechanics. No? Still not getting it? All right, never mind. Listen, it'll make sense as we keep going. The students get it and chuckle up a bit as the bell rings while Jason is in mid-explanation. We switch to see Jason's wife, Daniela, who is played by the amazing Jennifer Connelly, speaking with her friend Blair at an art gallery. Just remember Daniela, because... Yeah, Blair too. We then switch back to see the shadowy figure doing something shadowy in a storage locker, and we see the person in the storage locker... Wait, that's Jason. Sorta. Of. Kind of. He's up in there doing some weird stuff with a blue vial and a Metal Gear Solid style tranquilizer gun. Pew. Jason ends up going to Ryan's celebration after getting urged by his wife to go out and celebrate his friend's success. It's a local bar, so Jason's actually able to just walk over from his house and get himself some scotch. It's only a little awkward when everyone there celebrating with Ryan speaks so highly of him, like he's the Tony Stark of physics. Jason is still a little weird about it and we find out that Ryan had a bit of an ulterior motive in this by asking Jason to come so that he could invite him into a job opportunity with the downside being that the job is in San Francisco and you know not where Jason lives with his family in Chicago. And Jason's a family man and he's not really interested in uprooting his family even for his dream job. Jason eventually leaves the bar and starts heading on home when he's almost hit by a car while crossing the street. Jason starts making his way a bit further closer to his house when he hears someone asking if he could spare some change or something. He whips out a gun on him to rob him. Now, the guy is wearing a mask and forces Jason into a car where Jason is forced to drive them away. Jason is interrogated about his conversation with Ryan while the guy is holding him up at gunpoint. Uh, they eventually pull into this weird looking factory place that we saw at the beginning of the episode with the gunman stealing Jason's wedding ring and clothes. Jason then gets drugged and passes out in the basement of the factory and the creepy guy in the mask starts asking him, are you happy with your life? Yo. Next thing we know, we see Jason being checked, scrubbed, and waking up in a bedroom after being handled by some folks in hazmat suits. Jason looks a little roughed up and realizes pretty quickly that he's locked inside the room that has only a desk and a bed. We then see Alice Braga's Amanda walk into the room and seemingly happy to see Jason, who clearly has no idea who this woman is. He even tells her as much and she's a little confused too, but reassures him that everything's going to be okay and that he's been through a lot. Alice then walks Jason into another room where he meets Layton and a creepy woman with dreads that will be super familiar to anyone on TikTok that follows her because that's Marquita Books, aka Aina Brayon from the Shella Shepherd podcast. Yes, social media stars are stars too. Anyway, Jason sees Layton and remembers him as the, you know, rich college buddy that is funding his friend Ryan's new business. But this guy in front of him is not that guy. This Layton is the CEO with Amanda being the lab psychiatrist and Jason is supposedly the co-founder and chief science officer of whatever company this is. Jason is rightfully confused and surprised as the room full of people applaud him. Jason freaks all the way out and denies being whatever the heck it is they think he is, but they're still convinced that he's the guy they know as they try to show him some stuff around the lab. Jason makes a run for it and makes his way out of the building. Jason actually makes his escape, hails a cab, and finds a way to make his way back home where home is no longer home. I mean, like, the furniture has changed, the kitchen is different, and his family is gone. Instead, Jason finds Alice standing in his kitchen looking equally surprised to see him. That's when the show reveals that there's the other Jason in the other reality walking into Jason's house with Jason's wife and at that same exact time making himself familiar with Jason's life and his wife. 
she notices something is different about Jason, but he just talks it off as just being a long day and how he was offered a job by Ryan. That kind of set him in a mood. They talk a little bit with, I don't know, Jason 2, Jason Black. Blah, listen, we need to come up with a name for this dude. Otherwise, this is going to get confusing. I'm just going to stick with Jason 2 for now, but I'm open to suggestions in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Jason 2 starts spitting some venom in Daniela's ear and starts getting her in the mood for love. With Jason 1 in the other reality, trying to figure out why the hell Amanda's in his house and not his family. Amanda tells him straight up, look, I live here with you. And Jason 1 is all sorts of confused. His wife is gone. His son is gone. And his house has been remodeled. I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd be confused too. Jason 1 makes a run for it again when Amanda calls the security from the lab to come and pick up Jason. And we see Jason 2 taking full advantage of his new relationship status. And that's the end of episode 1. Like, woo, we see Jason on the run, confused and desperate. Meanwhile, alternate Jason is settling into his new life, a life that isn't truly his. And you got to wonder, who's going to win this battle of realities? Will Jason 2 escape this alternate reality and will he ever find his way back home? Anyway, that's all for episode one. I'm going to hop right on over to episode two. But if you're new here, like, subscribe, keep watching for episode two coming up next. happy you stuck around for our episode two breakdown what if you made a decision in your past that was so significant like skipping episode one's mm. breakdown that it left you confused and asking questions now what if you could go back and change your decision what's good my people this is anthony from existential crisis reviews and you know what we do here Today, we're diving back into the mind-bending world of Dark Matter, the new sci-fi series on Apple TV+. The series is based on the mind-blowing book series by Blake Crouch. He's the guy that wrote those thrillers in book form that got adapted to the mind-bending perfection that we see on Apple TV. Now, this is a story all about how his life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you how this life became a real physics nightmare. All right, all right, stop. Before I get the copyright, listen, I love you guys. Do me a favor. If you're new, like, subscribe, and keep an eye out for more videos. Back to Dark Matter. Now, make sure you watch the episode first because we're going to touch on some significant spoilers. This episode opens with Jason still on the run because his whole life got turned upside down and he's basically a wanted man in these streets. The show takes the time to give us a nice shot of Jason in front of a resilience sign. And yeah, this show has some beautiful shots. Jason makes his way to the neighborhood bar that we saw last episode. You know, the bar where he was there celebrating Ryan's new award and whatnot. He goes there wanting to see a familiar face and tries to talk to the bartender who's stuck wondering what kind of help Jason needs because he has no idea who the heck this guy is. In fact, he goes as far as to warn him to get the F out the bar and stop coming up in here acting crazy. Jason goes to the next step and decides to check himself into a hospital. And we see him getting checked out because at this point he's questioning his own sanity. We then see Jason too waking up the next morning after a pleasant night with his doppelganger's wife. And yo, that right there is effed up all the way. You sleeping with this guy's wife? His wife? That right there crosses so many lines, but hold that thought. Jason 2 then starts to explore his new house and tries to find his way around the kitchen. And overall, this guy is a fish out of water and starts to realize the little micro challenges of stealing someone's life. Like, where do we keep the coffee? We switch back to Jason 1, waking up in a hospital bed and finding out that even the hospital can't find his wife when they look her up by name. He eventually starts looking her up by her maiden name, Vargas, which is kind of a Latino name. Anyway, he 
Get some hits when he looks her up by that name and sees that she's having an art gallery exhibition pretty soon. We then switch back to see Layton and Amanda in Jason's kitchen and talking through how effed up everything is seeming, even for them, and trying to figure out where Jason would have went. Dawn makes a good guess when she says he probably went to the hospital. They go looking for him and Jason slips right past them without being seen while doing some creative thinking. We switch back to Jason too, who is struggling his way to find his lecture room for his teaching job. Jason too absolutely hates teaching. He doesn't like how the students barely pay attention and he starts calling them out for not really caring about the subject matter. He tries to adapt and even starts teaching for a moment and draws on the board that in 1850, a brilliant man named Rudolf Clausius did something and then we switch scenes. But don't worry, I got you. Let's talk about Rudolf Clausius, the OG energy guru, right? This dude wasn't out here teleporting matter or defying gravity, although that would be kind of cool, no. Clausius was all about the laws of thermodynamics, basically the universe's rule book for energy. Here's the thing, energy can't disappear, right? It's like socks in the dryer. They might vanish, but they're probably just chilling in the lint trap. Clausius figured out that energy can actually change forms. Yep. It can change forms, flow around, and do its thing, basically, but it just can't vanish. It's like a cosmic game of hot potato where the potato is always getting passed from one place to another, but it never disappears. But here's the twist. Clausius also figured out that while energy can't disappear, it can get kind of less useful, like a brand new phone battery dying throughout the day. That's entropy the slow march towards energy getting more spread out and less efficient. Clausius basically said the universe is like a party where everyone keeps sharing their drinks until eventually it's all watered down juice and nobody's feeling the vibe anymore. Bummer, but hey, at least the party never truly ends, right? Hold on to that thought because this feels like something that will be pretty important down the line. We switch back to Amanda and a pretty cool shot of some cool photo on the wall, two faces seemingly opposing each other. Amanda and Layton try to regroup and talk about next steps for finding Jason 1, with Layton explaining that he even reached out to Jason's friend Ryan and left word that they're looking for him. We then switch to see Jason 1 arriving at Daniela's art gallery and surprisingly getting the red carpet treatment on arrival. What's really interesting is that upon entrance to the gallery, visitors must choose between three doors from which to enter. And we see a quote from T.S. Eliot that reads, Footfalls echo in the memory. Down the passage which we did not take. Towards the door we never opened. Now, real quick. This dude T.S. Eliot wasn't your average rhymer. Forget sing-songy love poems and roses. Eliot was all about deep dives exploring the dark alleys of society and the human condition. Think of him as the hip-hop poet of his time, dropping rhymes that made people think, way before conscious rap was even a thing. Eliot was all about weaving complex poems that were like lyrical labyrinths. You gotta follow the flow, decipher the metaphors, and piece together the meaning hidden within the rhymes. Think about it like this. Eliot's poems were like rap battles where the bars were layered with hidden messages and references. You gotta listen close, unpack the wordplay, and appreciate the craft behind the flow. He pushed boundaries, challenged expectations, and proved that poetry could be more than just flowers and rainbows. It could be a powerful tool for social commentary, philosophical exploration, and dropping some seriously deep knowledge. Now, back to the show. Jason One makes his way through the trippy exhibit and realizes that he's the inspiration for the entire gallery. We eventually find Daniela, who recognizes Jason, but has no idea who he's talking about when he asks for their son, Charlie. Ryan is here too, looking a little different. And the two of them catch up without Daniela. It's here that we learn that Ryan created some compounds for Jason and has been secretly doing a lot of work for Jason and the company Velocity. It doesn't take long for Ryan to get confused by the fact that Jason 1 doesn't know things he should know. We switch back to Jason 2, still getting acclimated to the domestic life and enjoying the perks of being a married man. An interesting moment occurs when Charlie asks his parents for advice on this girl he likes and Jason 2 is all like, 
Don't tell her you're interested. Just show her you're interested and keep your feelings close to the vest. This is a big change in the kind of advice that Jason 1 gives his son, who's all about striking while the iron's hot when it comes to romance. Jason 1 is hanging out with Daniela and Ryan of this other world while they smoke a joint. Jason tries to explain to them what's happening to him in a hypothetical sense, which kind of spooks them. Daniela explains that Jason 2 came to her one night and kind of explained how the multiverse works and how new and how new universes exist for every choice people can make. Jason 2 also said to her that he had a secret project that he was working on and that she's probably never going to see him again. That's when Daniela asks this Jason about Charlie and she doesn't like his answer because it gets painful for her. He explains how life is in his world with Ryan being a famous neuroscientist and Jason and Daniela living the family life together with their son Charlie. Ryan gets annoyed after a while and clearly has some issues with Jason. We switch back to Jason too, still struggling with the micro challenges like trying to figure out which toothbrush is his in the bathroom. We then switch back to Jason 1 who is getting set up for sleep for the night by Daniela. She starts fixing a guest bed for him. Jason finds a rubber band in the house that he fashions into a makeshift wedding ring, which will probably be important at some point down the line, so keep that one in the back of your head. We switch back to Jason 2, creeping on Jason 1's wife again before she heads out on her morning run. Jason then gets in the car and calls up Ryan to decline the job offer because he definitely doesn't want to move away from Chicago. We then switch back to Earth 2 with Jason 1 calling Amanda and telling her that he's about to check himself into a mental hospital because he is starting to wonder if he's just insane. Once Amanda leaves the house, we see that this was a fake out so that Jason 1 and Daniela 2 could snoop around Jason 1's house. Jason 1 still doesn't recognize his house and neither does Daniela 2. It's at this point that Daniela 2 explains that back when they were younger that Jason chose to pursue a career instead of a family. And Jason 1 is all sorts of confused because this is the point in which our Jason, Jason 1, made a different choice than Jason 2. This is the moment that created the branch in their lives. When Jason 1 chose to stay with Daniela and Jason 2 instead chose to pursue science. We then switch back to Earth 1 and see Jason 2 visiting that storage locker we saw in the first episode where he keeps a lot of equipment, some cell phones, and even a gun. He must have brought all this stuff with him from Earth 2, that's my guess, including that creepy mask he wore to steal Jason 1's life. We then switch back to Earth 2 to see Jason 1 reading Jason 2's science notes on the box-like device that Jason 1 was also working on when he was younger that would allow him to place objects inside the box so that they can exist in a superposition state. Message. It's at this point that Jason 1 figures out that Jason 2 must have devoted his life to creating the box, putting humans in it like himself, and traveling the multiverse. It's at this point he realizes that the person who abducted him was Jason 2 and did so in order to steal Jason 1's life. He also realizes that Jason 2 placed him on Earth 2, theorizing that Jason 1 would have had similar regrets and would have wanted to live the life of a scientific rock star. Later that night, we see that Daniela 2 and Jason 1 have been becoming friendly with each other, especially with the Jason that chose her over science. They begin to actually have a romantic moment with Jason 1 explaining to her what life was like for them on Earth 1. And to be honest, it looks like Daniela 2 is kind of into it. They kiss. And if Jason 1 can't get back to his Earth, it's starting to seem like he can maybe start over with this Daniela on this Earth. And they start rolling around in the bed until... The doorbell rings and... Hey! Yo! Emotional damage! Well, just have it. Jason 1 opened the door and Dawn comes rushing in waving the ratchet and shoots Daniela in the head, ties Jason 1 up and end credits. Holy crap. That, that is how you hook an audience. 
what the F is going to happen? Now, I was just getting used to the idea that Jason 1 might be able to start a new life with Daniela 2, but <laughs> that's not what's happening. Why did she shoot her? Will Jason 1 break now that he has the trauma of watching his wife die in front of him? And why is Jason 2 revisiting the box that brought him into Earth 1? This show has so many layers to it, and I honestly can't wait for you all to see what happens in episode 3. Yo, I'm about 6 or 7. I'm about 6 or 7 episodes in right now, and I'm going to work on these videos while I'm watching to help point you in the right direction for figuring out what's going on. But that's all I have for this one. Let me know if you like this episode in the comments and if you have any questions or details that I might have missed about these first two episodes. Until next time, I'm going to check you all later. Peace.